Hey guys, in this episode I'm going to show you what gameplay events are within the context of the Unreal Engine's gameplay ability system. And then I'm going to show you an example of how you could use these events to create some interesting abilities. For now here's a sneak peek of a melee system I'm working on and this is also using gameplay events. I'm going to briefly explain how I did this too so yeah definitely stick around till the end. But anyways let's get started. Okay, so a gameplay event is just like any other event in Unreal Engine, except it's identified by a gameplay tag, kind of like we've seen in our gameplay effects and abilities, except it also contains special information about the event that's more related to the gameplay ability system. So as you can see, it has like tag information, um, target, inst target or instigator, um, actor references, stuff like that. Okay, so before we can wait for gameplay events, we need to know how to make them. All right, so it's pretty simple. If you right click on any blueprint, you can look for the make gameplay event data and see you can just select any of your gameplay tags and that's how you will identify the gameplay events. Just as a naming convention, I'd maybe recommend having like this event prefix for all of your events so you so you know which tags are specifically just for events. And here you can pass in all the different options for your gameplay event data. So instigator, target, blah, 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 blah. All right, once you have this um, structure, you can simply call this function here, send gameplay event to actor and pass in the payload. The nice thing about the system is that you can send gameplay events to actors. It doesn't have to be ability system components or anything like that. So it's, it's pretty simple. I mean, you, as long as you have an actor object, you can send gameplay events to them. And in your abilities, when you call wait gameplay events, by default, it'll look at the owner of this ability or like, you know, that, that owner's actor, as you can see in the, uh, the tooltip there. But I think, yeah, you can actually assign like specific actors to wait uh, for gameplay events. So say maybe maybe you have like some sort of prop that gets the event, but then you want to then like wait for it from some other entity. You can do that by passing in this, this parameter here. All right, well, that's pretty much it for gameplay events. As you can see, they're straightforward, pretty simple, but you can do a lot of really cool stuff with them. If you're interested, please leave a comment down below on whether or not you'd like me to go into more detail on how I like made this system. Um, but I'll just briefly go over some of the aspects of the system that use these gameplay events. So obviously, as we've talked about, I used it for the block ability. So while you're holding down the ability, it's gonna wait for this event. And when it receives this blocked event, it'll just call this on block function. And since this is a, a parent function for all block um, abilities, it just plays like some animation that indicates that it was blocked and it'll basically do some logic to determine how many more blocks you have. So see those three little shield icons? Uh, when you get hit, it, one goes down. And basically, yeah, this, this extra logic isn't really relevant, but just um, keeps track of how many times you've been hit and whether or not it should continue blocking. It's definitely spaghetti code, so I, I don't want to go over that right now. Another use of gameplay events worth mentioning um, would be for like melee attacks. So as you can see, this is my like base class for all melee attacks and it's kind of simple. Sorry for the spaghetti, but um, basically you just play an attack animation and it'll wait for this event.ability.hit. And when it receives this event, it'll apply like the gameplay effects to the target. And if you're wondering where we were getting this event from, I have this component here that performs melee hitbox traces for us. In my animation montages, I have an anim notify that calls this function. And then here we basically create, or, or we do sphere traces. We filter out all the objects all right, well, that's everything I had for you on gameplay events. If you found the video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe. If you want me to cover this melee system in more detail, definitely leave a comment down below because if enough people ask for it, I'll consider making like a mini series on this uh, melee system. Huge shout out to Captain Von Beck for encouraging me to create a Patreon. I actually wasn't gonna make one until 
maybe when my channel was a little bigger, but he asked for the link, so I made one. Since I just made this Patreon, it's pretty bare bones, but I definitely want to flesh it out more going forward. I will say that developers will have access to the full source code of all my videos going forward, and pretty soon I'm going to make a Discord server where we can all communicate with each other, and you can reach out if you have any questions. So yeah, if any of that sounds interesting to you, or if you just want to support me on Patreon, um, yeah, feel free. I'd really appreciate it. And with that, thanks for watching.